Greetings and welcome back to Doctor Who Revisited, where I go through every single episode of Doctor Who from 1963 all the way to 2023 and review them. And this is a big one. This is another season opener. And not just that, it is a first. It is a decade anniversary episode. The first of its kind and also the first ever multi-doctor story the three doctors oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy i love this episode and i'm i'm not gonna lie even though we have three more uh three 60th anniversary specials now to compare them to i to think three doctors is my favorite of the decade anniversary episodes probably my favorite multi-doctor story for reasons I will go into once we get to the other ones, but for now, let's just judge the episode as it is. And as it is, I mean, it's it's almost like they... Mm, how could I put this? They wanted this episode to be special, but they didn't want it to look like they're trying to make it special. If you catch my meaning. Obviously, back then, even though Doctor Who was still a big hit, relatively speaking, even though it's been like, you know, the 10th season already, they still had no idea how big this show is going to get, how long it's going to go. I think it was more towards the the Tom Baker area where they really started to realize, oh no, we've got something here. Like We, we, we kind of started to see some expansion and growth in the Doctor Who universe with the introduction of the Doctor's home planet, with the Time Lords, but they very rarely did much with the Time Lords. Like, only a few handful of episodes here and there. Like, we've seen, obviously, uh, the, the War Games and, of course, um, uh, Colony in Space. And then, of course, we got this episode. But I think it was only once we got to episodes like The Deadly Assassin, where the lore of Gallifrey and its role in the universe was much, 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 much further expanded upon but going into this episode now we get more time lord stuff uh with of course the introduction uh the reintroduction i should say of the cia and i'm pretty sure it wasn't necessarily called the cia yet at this point again going into my po my previous point they weren't a hundred percent sure what they were going for with gallifrey yet i mean case in point they haven't even started calling it gallifrey as of this episode at the moment. It's only until the next season. But, I mean, we see more Time Lords. We see the president of the Time Lords. We see a chancellor, or at least well, someone I'm assuming was the president, because I don't think they referred to him in this episode as the president, but in other expanded media stuff, in the novelizations and Doctor Who Wiki, he is referred to as the president. I don't think they quite established the hierarchy of the Time Lords just yet. But the little bit we do get to see of the Time Lords is really, really effective in this episode. And I really, really do enjoy what we see. Obviously, the outfits and uh, the decoration. Again, I mean, they're working with the budget they had at the time. But considering they weren't quite sure where they were going with, with this species, with this planet, I think they did, they did all right. But, of course, the majority of the episode isn't really taking place on Gallifrey. Half of it takes place on Earth, and half of it takes place somewhere else, which we'll talk about in a minute. But, first of all, let's just talk about some of the um, ancillary characters. Uh, Mr. Hollis, I think, the name of the guy that gets uh, abducted. And uh, Professor Tyler. Not quite sure why they're in this episode i mean they do have a purpose but i think the mr hollis character doesn't really do much in the episode i mean it's kind of a plot point he gets kidnapped or rather abducted by the mysterious black box uh which of course is then then sends uh, dr tyler uh to unit to introduce the plot to the doctor joe and the brigadier but um other than that, he really doesn't serve much of a purpose. I mean, just he also gets abducted several minutes later. And even when he shows up later, gets reunited with the Doctor and Joe, he doesn't serve much of a purpose as a character. 
like he didn't go through much of a character growth in the time he was in the mysterious antimatter world universe place he tries to escape at one point which leads to nothing i mean it's just a few minutes of him running up and down a corridor being chased by the jail guard creatures and then he shows back up and he's like nope well i tried so well why was he even there well i mean and I know it's a bit, it's a bit morbid, but I mean, it, it wouldn't really be out of place if uh, the jail guards just killed him. Like you wouldn't lose any substance from this episode, and in fact, it actually would fit much more with a Doctor Who episode where you know some of the less important characters, the red shirts of the Doctor Who universe, you know, just get taken out every once in a while. So that aside. Uh, these are the only two characters that I think really have no real purpose in this episode, aside from, you know, their introduction. The rest of the episode could have done without, without them. But of course, I mean, the characters that do serve a major purpose in this episode are, of course, the Doctors. And oh boy, we've got three of them. First of all, I love the reintroduction of Patrick Troughton's Doctor. Hasn't lost a step, hasn't aged a day. As the Doctor, he just showed up out of nowhere, and I, I also love the build-up that they that the Time Lords did uh, for uh, this Doctor. And also, with a title like the Three Doctors, you can assume that the other two are coming back for this one. So uh, the the, the build-up I, th I think was necessary. Like I think even then there was this question of will the other ones show up or are, are they just teasing us? And then of course they show a clip. From the Patrick Troughton era, I'm not 100% sure which episode that was from. But then, of course, they bring him in properly. And it's no, and if you realize, no, it's not just going to be uh, reshot, re, re-usages of old clips from previous episodes. No, they actually brought the Doctor full on into the episode. Sadly, they couldn't quite do the same thing with William Hartnell. And, of course, this comes from uh, the unfortunate real-world uh, tragedy of um, William Hartnell's uh, me uh, uh, physical health continuing to deteriorate. Of course, that was the reason why a regeneration was introduced into the franchise in the first place. Um, the His uh, health situation was so bad that they just had to recast him, which, of course, is the reason why the show still uh, moves on today. But uh, that uh, read its ugly head again in this context when uh, the guy just could not remember his lines anymore. And uh, the, the only way they could have him in the episode, he really, really wanted to be in this episode. Unfortunately, though, he, he physically couldn't. So all he uh, could do was just sit around in front of a camera and just read the line. Someone just held the, his script in front of him and he just read it. And unfortunately, that is very noticeable several times throughout the episode. Uh, there, there are times when you really do feel like the, the first Doctor could have been there physically and could have helped but because of real world constraints he couldn't so they had to write it into the story that uh he can't physically be there and he can only be a vo a face on a monitor but you know again it's unfortunate uh william hartnell is my favorite of the classic era doctors but i mean real life does have its, its limitations unfortunately and that really that that's what really kind of uh, dragged on this episode, but alternatively, I think the way they got around this problem was really good, and that is uh, that is one of the brilliances of this episode. And uh, this episode, and I think that's what really elevates this episode further, as opposed to some of the other episodes, uh, the decade anniversary episodes that have some issues in them and some you know real world issues that they didn't actually address. All these years later, but all of that aside, I love the introduction, the inclusion of William Hartnell in this episode, and I really do love uh, and enjoy the inclusion of the second Doctor. And oh my goodness, the scenes between the second Doctor and the third Doctor are priceless. Of course, I, I don't think John Pertwee and Patrick Troughton had much interaction prior to this, uh, to filming this episode, but as Pertwee said in multiple interviews. After the fact, this is really where they became huge friends 
and uh, a friendship that continued uh, all the way up until uh, Troughton's uh, uh, passing uh, somewhere in the 80s. I can't remember exactly when. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, John Perry continued uh, his uh, huge appreciation um, for Pat Troughton all the way up to his uh, passing in uh, 96. So uh, yeah, the chemistry between these two guys on and off screen is just amazing. If you haven't seen um, panels or promotional videos with these two characters promoting Doctor Who as their individual characters, I highly, highly recommend go, going to uh, look th those up. They are amazing. They are priceless. You look at them and you think they can't stand each other. Of course, hiding the fact that they are huge friends in real life and this was all just an act uh, for uh for the cameras Sorry. let's pass it on to peter he's uh, more well behaved than how to <laughs> stop interfering you was told to say where it came from he said where Don't it came stop from arguing. i did not will you stop arguing with me he was told I to say told... it came from blackpool from one day's showing of the doctor who show in blackpool I no 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 that was, that was yours that was your picture i had the little one in here Dematerialize. And I mean, it does really show in uh, their respective doctors when they're on screen because even some one of some of the characters actually point that out during the episode itself. You look at them and you're like, "How are these two the same character?" Like you can hardly believe that the, these two are uh, are even related, much less the same person. So. It's amazing, and it's unfortunately something that kind of gets lost a bit with other uh, multi-doctor stories in the modern era. And you know, after uh, this, I mean, of course, Perpy and Crockett continued that continued that in the Five Doctors, but like the this idea that it's the, supposed to be the same character, but these two different incarnations of the same character are so wildly different from one another that you can't really uh, uh, believe that. So I th feel like that's really uh, the chemistry between those two characters, uh, which ultimately are the same. Chemistry between the two actors, I should say, is really the main driving force of this episode. But there is another major driving force in this episode, which is, of course, the legendary Doctor Who villain, Omega. Not Omega. It's a very common mistake. His name is Omega. Not Omega. But Omega... He's just electrifying. I mean, if in, in, at any point when the third doctor and the uh, second doctor don't have their on screen banter, Omega really steals this show, uh, unless those two are on it, of course. But just the acting, even though it's a, a person in a mask, you don't actually see the proper physical facial features, but you, you all you you're left with is a voice and bodily performance and he does that amazingly it's it's a very tragic villain ultimately and a very uh megalomaniac villain and, and somehow i unfortunately i can't remember the name of the actor at the moment but he really manages to capture all of that in the same package in the same character and deliver it on screen amazingly he the way he uh, goes from this all-powerful, mighty God to this sad, tragic, tantruming child almost at times is amazing. Like I said, it's a it's, there's a reason why Omega is one of the most well-liked villains from Doctor Who of all time, especially when it comes to rogue Time Lords villains from the Doctor Who uh, villain roster. Because I mean, the performance in this episode alone. Of course, there's other performances of the character, both on the television show and on audio and novels and whatnot. But if but this performance set the bar for Time Lord villains, not named the Master or uh, the Meddling Monk. I mean, definitely for Omega, the character. So, yeah. Uh, Rassilon, as a villain, had a lot to follow up on. Uh, had a lot of, Had huge shoes to fill. Uh, w uh, considering this is the first proper one of the founding fathers of, of uh, Time Road Society shown on screen. And I'd say some of the incarnations of Rassilon did uh, capture that and some of the incarnations of Rassilon 
actually went above that. But we're not here to talk about wrestling at the moment. We're here to talk about Omega, which I think was re used to perfection. First of all, the costume looks amazing. The mask looks incredible. Like I said, the voice. Again, as low budget as it is, the set design was also really incredible. And even the, the scene of the dark side of his mind, ignoring for a minute how ridiculous and goofy that costume is, it's a very, very scary villain thing to do. Like, trap the doctor within a dark side of his own mind and attack him with your nightmares? Genius. Brilliant. Plus the fact that he can just create and generate things at will, like the gel guards. And yes, the gel guards look ridiculous. To say nothing about the antimatter organism thing. I mean, again, effects budget being what it was for the time, this is really where your imagination needs to come through. And it, with a little bit of imagination, th th this looks great. Like, again, if uh, if th those if they remade the gel guard costumes today with the effects budget of today, they would have looked great. And I'm sure that for 1973 audience, seeing that for the first time, it it would it would have blown people's minds. The sa same thing for uh, the uh, 2D animated liquid organism thing, and, and you know, ignore, ignoring for a fact that the um, ignoring for a second the 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 way the effects look, what those creatures do is uh, I think the more menacing thing where they just shoot things from their claws. They're impenetrable to bullets. The uh, the creature organism sends things to who knows where. That's pretty scary. That's pretty terrifying. If you then that really helps to go above and beyond the way the effects look. Overall, I really, really like how this episode ca came together in, in a nice, neat little package. Uh, this really did open the uh, the door for more uh, multi doctor stories and really set uh, precedent and a bar to follow for other decade anniversary episodes. Uh, I like uh, the ending scenes of it of of how. Uh, the Time Lords forgave the Doctor and gave him a brand new uh, dematerialization circuit and give, gave him back the knowledge of time travel, essentially meaning that his exile is now lifted and he can go back to traveling the universe wherever he, uh, uh, however he pleases. This is a very big moment for the Doctor, a very emotional moment. I think it's a, it's one of those moments that would have been elevated so uh, so much more if they had uh, the Murray Gold uh, theme at the time or some new uh, Murray Gold theme. Of sorts but you know i think uh for uh these such moments in uh the uh, the classic era of doctor who the no music uh really does help set the uh environment be being what it is so uh, yeah it's a very big moment it's a very uh, huge milestone for the doctor and i uh, really like the episode it's a really it's it's a uh, it's uh the first and in my opinion uh, my opinion could change as we go along this journey but i think right now it's my uh, favorite of the uh, decade anniversary specials, assuming we don't count an adventure in space and time. I think that one would be my favorite because it actually deals with the making of Doctor Who. It's a much, much more emotional for me personally. But if we're talking about just an episode of the show, this is my favorite. Uh, but again, well, uh, I'll explain why uh, I like this one over... Some of the other ones as we get to them as we get to talk about them but uh this is my these are my opinions for now and uh i'll leave you with that so uh the, the doctor's got a brand new dematerialization circuit he's off to travel in the universe all over again and uh we're just uh, here for the ride to enjoy along with him so uh yeah i'll see you some other time talk to talk about the next episode and uh, until then everybody Oh my god. Hi there. Thank you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. I'll see you next time.